Just to prove to you how much better homemade is than store-bought, you can really just tell with your eyes. Delicious basil pesto, everyone loves it, but do you know how to make it? If you've got just a few ingredients and a little bit of time, I'll show you how and stick around because I'm gonna show you all the ways I like to use it. So this recipe is gonna start with three packed cups of basil leaves. With the weather getting warmer, you're gonna see lots and lots of basil. It's very easy to grow on your own. You can just start with one of these small plants or a couple of them, put them in a pot on your porch. Even I can do it and I kill everything. You want to kind of pinch them off just before you see some new growth happening. And when you're measuring, I like to pack it down in the cup. Like if you just filled up the cup, you know, it would just be this many basil leaves. That's not the way I wrote the recipe. That's a cup. And that is your main ingredient. However, if you don't have basil, or if you want to stretch the basil, you can always add in some spinach, some arugula for a little more of a peppery pesto, or even just add in some parsley. But I'm showing you the basic way. Once you get this, you zhuzh it up however you want. Get rid of any leaves that are black or you know have wilted too much. Time to wash and dry. All right, washed and dried, and that is the hardest part. If you have a salad spinner, this is a great time to make use of that. Classically, this was made maybe in a little bit of a smaller batch in a mortar and pestle, but you know, everybody's looking for convenience now. So food processor it is. And then I'm going to pulse that with our nuts. So I'm using pine nuts. This is what's classic. It yields such like a creaminess to the pesto. It's amazing. However, these can tend to be very expensive. Great substitutes for pine nuts are walnuts or even some macadamia or blanched almonds. But I'm on work budget, so, and I'm trying to teach you the classic way, so we're going pine nuts. No matter what nut you use, go ahead and lightly toast it in a skillet for just about five minutes over medium heat, just until they start to take on a little color, but really they start to release some aroma. That's gonna give better flavor to your pesto. And then two cloves of garlic. I do about two large cloves. I think two big cloves yields a good amount of garlicky flavor. It's peppery, it's strong. So if you want less garlic, add less. If you want more, add more. Just peel it, maybe cut it in half, and throw it in the food processor. So I'm just gonna pulse this until it's finely chopped. Then I'm gonna turn it on low and slowly drizzle in my oil. We are going with a good extra virgin olive oil. This is a no cook sauce. So whenever you're doing no cook things, extra virgin olive oil is a great choice. And that's how it's done. Scrape it down about halfway through. You can go as smooth as you want and you can get it as thin or as thick as you want. If you want it a little thinner, just add a little more oil. It's gonna thicken up when we add our final ingredient, which is the Parmesan cheese. The better the parm, the better the pesto, although you can use whatever kind of parm you want. You wanna freshly grate it about half a cup. And then once you add this, it's really just maybe like two or three more pulses and you're done. The garlic yields some peppery bite, so you don't really have to add pepper unless you want it extra peppery. The Parmesan cheese adds some salty flavor. And then for a bonus ingredient, a little squeeze of lemon. I think it brightens it up and just goes so perfectly with the basil and Parmesan. Final step, add in our parm, a little squeeze of lemon, just about one to two teaspoons, and then a pinch of salt. A couple more pulses and we're good to go. It's so bright green, it is so fragrant. You smell every single thing I put in there. I'm telling you, best pesto ever. Let me give it a little taste to make sure I don't need to season it anymore. Mm. The final step is to transfer it to an airtight bowl. You know, a lot of times people's pesto turns brown. One way to avoid that is to keep it from getting too much air. Just like how when you tear a basil leaf, as soon as that tear is exposed to the air, the edges turn brown. It's just like, you know, lots of other things like avocados that oxidize and turn brown. The oil in the pesto also helps kind of keep it from too much air getting in, but sometimes when you store it, you could put an extra little drizzle of olive oil over the top and that's gonna keep the air out and your pesto nice and bright green. 
Just to prove to you how much better homemade is than store-bought, you can really just tell with your eyes. The fresh made is so vibrant green. You can see that this one has turned a little brown and ours is so much more aromatic. No comparison here. Now that we have our beautiful gem of a concoction, I'm gonna show you my favorite ways to use it. Of course, the obvious choice is to just toss it with some pasta. It's a great no cook sauce that can dress up any sort of non mayo based pasta salad, or you can toss it with any sort of veggies. It makes a great potato salad also. Next, pesto plus eggs, why not? Not only is it a great addition to your deviled eggs, but try whisking it in next time you make scrambled eggs. It makes the flavor so much better. Does change the color just a little bit, but it's so worth it. I was pleasantly surprised with the scrambled eggs and I will use this all summer long. Next, try adding pesto to your meats and marinades. For marinating chicken, I love just tossing it in a bag with whatever other flavorings. It adds a great fresh kick to your marinades. I love topping it on some grilled salmon for a light, easy supper. Next, try pesto on pizza. It's a great alternative to red sauce. I love making little individual pizzas with pita or naan bread. Just give it a little spread, add some salami, some mozzarella. It's the easiest dinner and these are so good. Next, try stirring pesto into dips and dressings. This is a great way to spruce up a veggie crudite and also perfect for adding fresh flavor to store-bought vinaigrettes. You can also use it as part of a dressing for your green salad or potato salad. Use pesto to finish up soups and sauces. Instead of sprinkling fresh herbs on the top or at the end, just add a small dollop of pesto for fresh basil flavor. Plus it's got a couple other ingredients like the cheese and nuts so it adds extra richness and creaminess. And my favorite way is to spread it. Yes, it's absolutely delicious on just some crusty bread with a little bit of tomato, mozzarella, make it caprese style. It's just the perfect bite. But take that a step further and stir it into some mayonnaise and create your own spread for a delicious sandwich. I love crusty bread, a little grilled chicken, melt that cheese. It is the absolute perfect secret weapon in your sandwich making process. Trust me. This pesto is something special and so easy to make. I hope you'll give my recipe a try and let me know in the comments what you want me to teach you how to make next. See you next time. Nailed it.